Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, the previous lecture was about power and uh, right now it's uh, an opportune time to, to do some problem solving. So I have three problems here, all about the power. Um, now, uh, this lecture and uh, all the preceding ones and all the following ones are a part of the course called Physics for Teens. It's presented on unizor.com. Um, now, this is a completely free website, there are no advertisements, no financial strings attached, and I do suggest you to watch this lecture and everything else from the website, because it's presented in a logical course order. Um, so, if you found this lecture, for instance, on YouTube or anywhere else, um, it's, much, it's much better if you will start from the unizor.com, because every lecture has a textual material, and uh, uh, there are some exams for those who would like to uh, to take exams, and you don't even have to sign in. I mean, it's optional. Okay, so problems about the power. Well, let me start from something which I um, did talk about in the previous theoretical lecture about the mechanical power, but it's a very important formula which I'm going to use in all these problems. Now, we all know that in a very simple case, the work is basically a product of the force times the distance this force is acting. But this is basically a very kind of simplified definition because um, obviously the force can be variable and uh, uh, the distance uh, during which the, the force is applied obviously also um, uh, it's not a fixed basically distance where the fixed force is applied. Everything is a function of time. So let's just concentrate on, on this time-based thing. So if you have um, a motion and uh, the motion is described by the function of distance from the beginning uh, as a function of um, the time t, then um, what we can say is the following, that the increment infinitesimal increment of the work at time t is basically from t to t plus dt. This is the time frame we're talking about. During this time frame um, our force can also be, by the way, function of time. Force can be variable. And during this infinitesimal uh, time period, uh, the distance the object uh, moved under the influence of this force is infinitesimal uh, differential, basically, uh, of, of, the, of the distance, right? So we start from this. It's a much better definition. Uh, it's a differential definition of the work. Now, from which we can definitely derive, if we will basically divided by dt, by the differential of time. And uh, this would be a definition of power. Power is the rate of the change of, of the work which is done. Instead of f of t using the second Newton's law, we can substitute um, m times acceleration, mass time acceleration. And the differential of the distance is the speed. So this is the function which is functional dependence between the power uh, which is exerted by the force, the mass, acceleration, and the speed this particular object is moving. So this is the formula which is very important and I am going to use it in, uh, in these problems. So let me put it here. Power is equal to mass times speed times acceleration. Okay, now, problem number one. We have a car. I mean, all prob problems about the cars. Now, it has mass m. And I know that during the time t, it accelerates from 
zero to uh, speed v. This is the maximum speed with constant acceleration. So I have two problems here. What's the power as a function of time? Now, the A is constant. Power might or might not be constant in this case. We will find out actually what is the power to basically assure the constant acceleration. Power will not be constant. So what's the power as a function of time? And uh, I would also like to know, um, to relate it to the power, usually the speed of the burning of the fuel in a car is kind of proportional to the power. So if I will know how the power behaves, I will have to basically make a judgment about what will, my, what will be my fuel consumption as the time goes by. This is the, not the quantitative, it's a qualitative um, uh, now, so how can I approach this? So first of all, if I know that the A is a constant and I know that during the time T my car accelerates from zero to V, I can definitely come up with what is the acceleration. Uh, sorry, it's capital T. And this is constant, as I'm saying. Now, knowing the acceleration, and I know that this is a constant in this case, I know the force. Also constant. Right? Now, again, knowing acceleration, and acceleration is constant, I know the formula for the distance covered. It's basically a t squared over 2 as a function of time. So now, since I know the acceleration, I know the distance as a function of time. This is a simple formula from kinematics. And so the speed as a function of time, I should probably put max here. That would be better. Now, speed as a function of time, if the constant acceleration is basically a times t, right? So it's v max over t times t, right? So I know my uh, force, I know my acceleration, I know my speed, from which I can derive the power using this formula. Mass times speed, which is V max over T and time, and time times acceleration times V max over T. All right. Now, um, since I know this particular um, function, I can actually make a judgment about the fuel consumption. So, first of all, well, let me just write it square, square and get rid of this. So this is the formula for the power and as you see the power is supposed to be increasing as the time goes by. So to assure the constant acceleration if you have a very low speed in the very beginning of, of, your, of, your, uh, of your motion it's easier so to speak for the engine to, to give you certain acceleration then if you have already gained certain speed and you would like to continue um, the same acceleration the same acceleration from a larger value of the speed would take more power than the, the same acceleration from the 
from the zero speed or from the low level of the speed. By the way, the same thing with economy. If economy is in a very poor shape, in the very beginning, so to speak, of development, it's much easier to accelerate it uh, than if it's already a developed economy and you would like to continue acceleration of the same level, like, I don't know, 4% a year, for instance. 4% a year is easier if, if the economy is a very small one. But if the economy is a very developed one, it's much more difficult to achieve the same 4% a year. Because 4% of economy growth is exactly the same as acceleration um, in, uh, in the car. And now, speaking about fuel consumption, since the power is increasing as the time goes by, fuel consumption also should increase. So the rate of the fuel consumption per unit of time, let's say, is greater and greater if you would like to maintain the same acceleration with increased um, speed. So that's my first problem. The second one is basically much similar to this one. I'm just um, giving you different uh, initial data. Now what is in this case is I do have again the car and I have its mass. Now my power is constant. So the previous problem, acceleration was constant and the power was supposed to be increasing. Now my power is constant and I have to find out what are my speed and my acceleration. And in particular is acceleration constant and which is the same thing is my uh, speed linearly increasing which means acceleration is constant. Well, let's see. The answer to both questions is no, but let's just derive it the way how we are supposed to derive it. Again, I'm using this formula. Now my p is constant, so I don't have to put p of t as a function. I'm just putting p. And this is equal to m v of t. And instead of a of t, I will put d v of t by dt. Since acceleration is the first derivative of the speed, I can do that, right? Well, now, what is this? This is a differential equation. And again, we did actually talk about these very, very simple differential equations um, in the course of mathematics, which precedes this course, Physics 14. On the same website, there is a Math 14. So, differential equations and calculus are very, very important for physics. So, this is one of those cases, but in this case it's uh, so simple that I can actually just do it right now. But I will do, I will multiply everything by this infinitesimal uh, increment of the time, and I have a differential here, and I have a differential here. Now, what is this? Well, if I will integrate this, this is actually a derivative of p times t, right? So if I will integrate it from 0 to t, I will get this. And if I, if I will integrate this from 0 to t, integral from 0 to t, integral 0 to t. What happens now? What is this? Well, m is just multiplier. This is a differential of v squared uh, divided by 2. So, if I will integrate it, I will get this. From which follows v of t is equal to 2p t divided by m square root. This is my function speed as the function of the time t. In the beginning, obviously, speed is zero. P is a constant. We apply the constant power, but the speed is not growing linearly. So it's not a linear speed. It's a square root of time. So the speed is the rate of speed, which is acceleration, um, is diminishing 
as the time goes by. If it was linear, the speed would be linear and it will be the same. But in this particular case, it's a square root of time. So the graph would be like this. And incidentally, a of t, which is a derivative from this, which is what? Uh, so square root of 2p times m is just a multiplier. So I have a derivative of square root of t, which is 1 over 2 square root of t, which is equal to square root of, this would be 4, so it's p over 2mt, right? Yes. And again, it's not a constant. So acceleration is not constant. If your power is constant, acceleration is diminishing as the time goes by. In the beginning, when, t is, when, when time t is small, it, it's rather large. But as the time goes by, this is denominator, it's increasing. So my acceleration is decreasing. If you have a constant power, you started the car, for instance, you have an acceleration um, relatively, you, you feel acceleration if you're just starting the movement, right? But as you move forward and forward, if you keep the gas at the same level, so the power of the engine will be at the same level, you will reach certain plateau and your uh, increase of the speed will be really diminishing. And then, obviously, you will have a resistance of the air and, and the friction, etc., which would completely put a plateau on your speed. So that's my second problem. And now let's go to the third one. And again, it's very much similar and it's using exactly the same kind of formulas for power, speed, acceleration, etc. I'm just giving different parameters. So the car, again, mass m. Power is constant. And what I'm interested in is how soon I will achieve certain speed, which I'm calling Vmax. So how much time it will take for me to reach uh, let's call it T max. How much time it will take under these conditions to reach this speed? Well, actually, this is uh, the problem which we basically solved. Because let me just remind r remind the previous problem we had. We have come up with this equation, if you remember. Uh, v square of t divided by 2 from which we have derived what is the speed as a function of time. In this case we have a completely reverse thing. We know the speed. This speed is supposed to be Vmax and we are asking about the time. So what I'm doing is right now I'm just resolving this equation uh, for time. And now, if my speed, which I'm looking for, it's supposed to be equal to Vmax, so the Tmax, the time to achieve this speed would be V mv max squared divided by 2p. So, again, qualitatively, obviously, if your power is greater, this is denominator, your time to achieve this speed would be smaller, shorter, right? Another thing is, the more massive the car is, the more difficult it is to uh, accelerate it to this particular speed. And that's why with increased mass, the time to achieve this speed would also be um, increasing with the constant power. So that basically corresponds to all the qualitative analysis. Okay, so what I'm suggesting to you right now is to go to unizor.com, open this lecture, 
and um, just try to solve all these problems yourself. I think it's a very useful exercise. Check against the answers uh, which are provided on the website. Um, and that basically it. I mean, that would complete my, well, introductory um, lectures about the power. And uh, that basically completes my um, part of the course, which I called mechanics. Um, now, the next part is related to, well, partially it's related to mechanics, but I call it energy. And the energy is not only mechanical energy, obviously there are some other aspects of the energy, but that would be the continuation, that would be the next part of the course. Mechanics is more or less finished. So, thank you very much and good luck.